Hi, Monia from flipnomus.com here. And in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how you can create microscopic shaders inside of Maya with V-Ray. Um, we're going to look at two different methods of doing this. Um, one is with the V-Ray Fresnel material. And the other one is my preferred method, which is with the sampler info node. This is my reference sheet for, um, for this tutorial. And I mean, <laughs> it's a very poorly organized reference sheet, but we don't really need a lot. Um, it's very obvious what, what exactly we're going for. Uh, we can see like towards the middle or towards the center of an object. It's very, yeah, it just has a base color. And very, very quickly we get this nice Fresnel going uh, when we get towards the edges. So this is really what we're going for. So if you go ahead and download the, the test scene that's included with this video, um, you're gonna you're gonna get this when you open it up. And what's in here? Let's just take a look. Is a very light. And it's just a V-ray light pointing straight down that's invisible. A V-ray camera, a physical camera. And in here, in the micro group, you will have two objects. One is the micro medium, and the other one is the micro low. The micro low is just to like, better, better preview uh, your object. It has a, a lot lower, like the polycon is a lot lower. So um, it's just, but I'm going to use the, the micro medium. There's this thing down here, which is my little distance sphere. This I use this to calculate the distance from the camera. So when I set up uh, depth of field, um, I know exactly where the focus point is, is in the scene. So this is just a, a hidden object. Anyway, so if you go ahead and open that, this is, this is what you'll be presented with. And like, I won't go into detail talking about um, Correct, like linear workflow and stuff like that. The scene is already set up to, to that, so um, I, you should have a basic understanding of how to set things up before you start experimenting with these kinds of shaders, I think. Um, but yeah, let's just get started with this. So to begin with, we're going to take a look at the, um, just like a standard V-ray material with the Fresnel um, on it. So if you go into assign new material, and you find your V-Ray material. We just make it this. And what we'll do is we'll simply pipe in a V-Ray Fresnel into the diffuse color. So if uh, now we can't really see what we're doing. So if you go into render editors and you pull the hyper shade, you'll be able to see your shader, um, which is this one. And let's just name this correctly. So it's just so we know so it's V-Ray material and we're just going to call it for now. So, so we keep this open in the hyper shade over here so we can see what we're doing and then we have this. So basically we have a front and a side color. The side color is the color closer to the edge and the index of refraction, the IOR, is it what is, control, is controlling um, the, the Fresnel. Uh, but this, I feel this material is very limited because uh, it just it doesn't it doesn't give you any options other than this. I mean, you can pipe in two colors if you want, and that's fine. And then you can mess around with this slider here. But if you want a specific look, it's not really optimized that well for doing it. I think. Um, but you can mess around with this. But we're not actually going to focus on that material in this tutorial. What we will do is we will take a look at the sample info node. So uh, let's just go back to our material and break the connection. So we just have a standard V-Ray material now. So, uh, and you will need the Hypershade editor for, for this because we're gonna set up some nodes and stuff. So just select our V-Ray um, Fresnel material. And if you press the input output connections, it's going to appear down here in your work area. Now we need to find two nodes. The first node is going to be a ramp node. So click it and it's going to load it here. 
So the ramp node is going to be is going to serve as our, our Fresnel material basically. So for this tutorial, we're just going to need two colors, like with the Fresnel one as well. So we just delete the middle one, and we set one color to be white, and the other to be black. I can't remember if this is the, the right way around. There we go. And just leave this to, to default for now. And the next one we're going to find is the sampler info node. The sampler info node is fantastic. It's, it's got a lot of properties um, that you can play around with. But the one we're going to be focusing on is the one called facing, facing ratio. So depending on the facing ratio towards the camera, it's going to display what we tell it. So if you just middle click or middle drag up to our ramp, and we go into other. You see the facing ratio is here. We just select that. And under the UNB chord, just expand that. And then if you remember, the type uh, that the ramp is set up with default is the V coordinate. So just press V chord. We'll close that. And so, see, V ramp. So then we want this ramp to control the diffuse color of the Vera material, just as we did with the Fresnel before. So middle drag over here, and you can just select this as, um, as diffuse color. So immediately you'll see a, slight, a, a very different result from our Fresnel material. And the, the wonderful thing about the ramp is that we can really do whatever we want. Let's say, I mean, you could, you could pipe in some purple in here as well, if that's what you wanted, and it's really, it, it really gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, all right, so, so for now, let's just uh, keep this white, well, almost white. And I, I don't like to ever make anything completely white because, yeah, I don't know, nothing in nature is completely white or black. So I always try to stay away from complete natural white. Um, all right. And actually this color, I don't actually want it to be black. If you look at our reference images, it's it's more in like the gray zone. Yeah, maybe something like that. Now another thing we want to mess around with is the interpolation. Right now it's just linear, so it just goes from white to gray, straight like that. So what we can do is we can mess around with the other ones. What I like to use is exponential down. Um, let me maybe pull this off. It just gives a, a slightly harsh fall off, um, but it looks most of the time it looks pretty good, I think. So with that done, let's just go uh, up to filter shade and let's design our material. So we find our VMTL. Fresnel material. So, uh, and my camera here, uh, like I mentioned previously, is set up to, to work with uh, depth of field. So if you just look at the camera settings, I have an f-stop or f-number of 3.6. So it's quite shallow, uh, but not too shallow. Um, shutter speed of 25, uh, with 25th of a second. And the focus this is 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 fourteen point eight, and that's just the one I found by selecting my sphere and placing my sphere on the surface, and checking this distance from camera uh, attribute. And you can get this uh, HUD up by going to display, heads up display, and selecting object detail, and that'll give you this. It's very very useful, I think. But uh, let's just yeah, let's just render this and see what it looks like. We don't want the render region on. <laughs> so let's render it again. All right, so that's looking that's looking pretty nice. And I mean, one of the things I did was I purposefully didn't add a lot of details um, towards the edges of the mesh because I knew I wanted to blur it. But you can see all the fine details in here really pick up this Fresnel effect really nicely. 
Um, but this, I mean, you can tweak this as much as you want, really. Um, but I, I'm happy with this result. One thing that um, I did for this is I added a normal, normal pass. Um, and the reason I'm rendering it in black and white is because I'm going to play around with it in Photoshop. So when it's black and white, it's, it's just easier to add color and stuff. I mean, you could make it black and white afterwards in Photoshop, but that's another thing. If you want to do something with color, using this method, I mean, this is not as good because right now I'm just using uh, black and white. So, but let's say you had a, um, a texture that you wanted to put in to this. Uh, so if you just quickly go back to the hypershade, um, the way we do this, or the way I do this, uh, would be with a D-ray blend material. So, for the sake of repetition, let's just create this one more time. So, I have a blend material here, right? Uh, and so, what we want to do is we want to add a Fresnel coat to our material, and then have a texture base material. So, we have a blend material and a standard D-ray material. So, if you just go back here, and you middle drag uh, your material onto here. Now this is the base material. So, and this material uh, will add uh, a texture. So if you go into the diffuse color, uh, go into file and find your texture. I just have a texture here for this. So I like to uh, tick off the filter type and remember to uh, set the texture input gamma. This just gamma corrected, so everything looks looks right. All right, so now we have this. So a very blend material just looks like this right now. It's just the base material. So once again, what we want to do is we want to create a very material. It's going to be here. We want to find a ramp. And we want a sampler info node there. So let's just organize this a little bit better. All right. So take this middle drag into other. Phasing ratio goes into the V chord or U chord, depending on what you've selected. Middle drag this over to the diffuse color. So now we just want to, just what we did before, we just want to set up two colors, one being white, and one being black. Let's just do this. And as, as before, um, actually this time, this time we do want it to be completely black. And I'll explain why in just a second. This one, oh. Okay, white and black. There we go. So, turn off the exponent. And there it is. Yeah, we're good. All right, so, all right. So, we have our blend material here and our coat material. So, we just drag our coat material over here. Now you can see we get this. So effectively what it's done is it's like in Photoshop when you have a, you have a blending mode which basically screened it on top which removes um, all the sort of darker pixels and keeps the wider pixels. Um, so this is exactly the result we would get if we did it the other way. Now if you take additive mode it's gonna add the color or add the luminance on top and this is going to give us um, like better Fresnel. So instead of having a white Fresnel um, along the edges, it's going to give us a white-ish Fresnel that's colored by the underlying color. Um, but that's that's so that's how you would do that with with a texture map. But um, yeah, let's just render this out again, um, but with our Fresnel material that we have here. Here Fresnel. And make sure that our normals pass is, is selected or created. So you just go over to the available render elements, you find normals, and you just double click it. And it's going to add a normals pass. And I'll just use this for like some light color tinting. 
just because it gives a cool effect sometimes. So I'll render and then we'll jump into Photoshop. This is just where we have straight out of Maya. And um, so I've already done like the whole post stuff I wanted to do on this image. Um, so I'm just going to take you through uh, my layers. You can see there aren't really that many, but um, it's just, yeah, I guess it's just a matter of how you, how you use the layers um, to really effectively get what you want. Uh, the first thing I did um, was to just like soften up the edges. You can see the render we got in because I didn't really use a lot of subdivs for anything because I just wanted a fast render. There were really like a lot of artifacts around the edges. So I just went in with a black brush and just sort of softened the edges. Now the next thing was the normals path that I talked about. And you see the normals path here, if I just set it to normal, just comes in like this. And you can see this already presents us with a lot of like color variation. And I think it's really interesting to to use this sometimes because you can really spice up your image just just a tiny bit. So what I did is I set it to soft light and I'm not going to go too much into detail but I'll try to explain um, so it makes sense. So the soft light blending mode is like a combination of screen so on lighter pixels and then it uses multiply on the darker pixels so it gives this like it's soft um, it doesn't really blow out anything um, whereas if you put screen on screen sort of removes the darker pixels and and multiply does the opposite so putting it to like if you put it to something like overlay you can see we get a lot of contrast and the contrast is not really what we want so soft light is a, is a good option here and then i just i just put down the opacity i mean you can do whatever you want with the opacity but 73 percent random number just seemed to work for me um another thing that i did was I applied a hue and saturation to the normals pass and this is just because I didn't like the original colors so uh, you can just yeah just apply a normals pass just go down here or sorry a hue and saturation pass and I mean just go crazy with the colors uh, you can it gets all, all kinds of things in here so it's really it's really up to what you need um, so just go ahead and play around with this uh, until you find the like the combination of colors that you really like. Um, what I did, you can see here, is there's a tiny arrow down here. Um, this just means that the hue and saturation is only gonna affect the underlying layer. And you do this by holding down Alt and then just clicking. You see now my cursor changes to this little arrow with a box. You just click in between the two layers and now it's sort of like locked to this layer, all right? So let's just set this back to soft light. And yep. The next thing I did was to apply a curve slayer. Now the curve slayer is very powerful. I use it all the time. And you can use this not only to change color, but also um, like luminosity of the picture. So if you go into here, what I've done is um, let's see. I've gone into the red channel. I mean, I've gone into all three channels, but I'll just quickly go through them. And like, I've pulled this down. I pulled the red uh, shift down a little bit, so you see, I eliminate some of the red in in all the midtones. And by pulling this more towards uh, the other curve, I increase the red in the highlights. And for the green one, the green one is very um, sensitive. So you have to be careful with this. So you see like compared to the red curves, we have a lot more, um, we have a lot bigger shift. It's usually a lot bigger. If you go into the green channel, you can see that it's very, very tiny. So pulling this down again, we remove some of the green stuff. And pulling this up here, we increase it in, because we're not doing it like closer towards this, we increase it in not just the highlights, but a little bit in the midtones as well. And finally for the blue one, I know, this is just something I like to do sometimes. It's uh, it's to create this sort of, what do you say? It's more like an, like an old school, kind of, photo, I guess. It, like if you look at the if you look at the blacks in my picture, they aren't black. Um, oh, 
They're actually, they're actually blue. Jesus. <laughs> Let's see here. So you see, they have a like the saturation is is slightly slightly blue. Um, I don't know. That, that's just an effect that I like. So uh, the way you achieve this is like again with this, you pull down the blue, and depending on how much you pull each of these down one is going to be more dominant. So you can see in my case green is sort of like the most dominant because green is the one that's been pulled down the least. Um, and then what you do is you want to equalize this area over here. So the more you pull this up, the more blue you're going to introduce into the shadows of your image. So I mean I'd be careful with this, but I think it adds a cool effect sometimes. All right. And the next thing is a glow layer. So the way I've made the glow layer is just simply by using a soft brush um, and then just going around the image and painting. Um, the, the blending mode for the, for the glow layer is a uh, linear dodge. And linear dodge is similar if you've ever used the color dodge, which like the color dodge is brighter than sort of like the screen blending mode and has very intense contrast. So, um, it's less saturated than the color dodge. You get, you still you get very saturated colors and and mid tones, but it's very bright. So I, I like it to use it. You can either use this like linear linear dodge or just like color dodge. So it doesn't really make that much of a difference when it's just like a subtle glow layer like this. And now we we go like Michael Bay on this image. So this is really where the the fun starts, I think, uh, because we're like. I felt because we're on this microscopic level, they're going to be, even though on our reference images, everything was very clear, but I wanted to add a lot more busyness to the image. So I went on Google and I found a bunch of pictures of particles. And I don't know, like particles are just cool. So again, this layer has been set to linear dodge and I've just gone in here and I don't even know if you can see this, uh, probably not. Um, but I've just gone in here and I've actually erased it. Like I've, I haven't touched the opacity. Uh, I've set it to linear dodge, so you can see it, it affects the underlying image. Um, so if you set this to color dodge, you get a few highlights here and there. But setting it to linear dodge, it mixes better with the midtones and gives you this really nice overlay. Um, and this one, the color dodge, this color dodge, because because color dodge is more saturated and more intense, uh, like contrast wise, um, I just try to mix it up. So you see, this applies a lot of color, like these big particle splashes. Um, let's see. Yeah, here you can better see it. This, this is a very dark picture with these very big splashes of particles. So the color dodge simply just removes the, the darker part and really intensely applies the lighter color on top of the image. I um, have another one up here. Uh, this is basically the same particle layer as this one, just flipped and set to screen instead. So the screen doesn't add the saturation. It keeps it very soft and just keeps the, the brighter pixels and removes all the darker pixels. And then I have this red glow layer because I felt like the image was getting very dominated by, by blue after my curves adjustment. So I just went in with a red brush, soft, a soft brush with a red color. You just went toward like along the bottom and I use color dodge for this color because this way it like mixes a little better with the, um, the darker parts of the image. And then I did something I never do. is <laughs> uh, I added lens flares. Um, I, have n I have no idea why. It's, it's really stupid, but it was fun. And I mean, I've kept them very subtle. So, I mean, you see a slight shift when I turn them on and off. And the standard way to like apply a, uh, a lens flare, I guess, is again with the, with the screen mode, where it just removes the darker pixels, keeps the brighter pixels, and then I just toned it down. I actually toned down the opacity and deleted stuff in the image because, I mean, it was, it was too Michael Bay. I, I couldn't deal with it. So, and this is really, this is sort of like all my post stuff gone or like done where I can like, where I've like gone in with brushes and stuff 
And then after that, I just have a, like a tiny routine where I go in and I just apply some filters. But the first one is a sharpen filter. So if we zoom in here and we look at the sharpen one, you can see it really adds, it adds a lot. It really makes all the details pop a lot more. Um, so I like to use it. Of course, it's like case dependent, but uh, for this one, I thought it made sense because we're like this electron microscope and we really want to focus on this like specific area here. And then there's a lens correction. So <laughs> this time, uh, oh, yeah, and the sharpen, you can find them in filter, sharpen, sharpen. As for the lens correction, uh, I went a little crazy this time. And I usually don't do this either. Like you can see down here, it's very like we get a, a lot of um, chromatic aberration. And and this is, I've, I've cranked up the, the lens correction like 100%. So the way I did this is you go to filter and you go to lens correction, go to custom. And in here you have the, you have the possibility to add like uh, the chromatic aberration or take it away. So let's just, Zoom in, and so I've added this like blue red chromatic aberration. And the way I did this is you 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 pull up the the green magenta blue yellow, and then you pull down this one. And you can see the more this gets pulled up, the more chromatic aberration we get. So, and then I also used the lens correction to to add a vignette. Uh, because again, like I wanted to focus on this part and I felt before we had like, because of the curves adjustment again, we had the blue color and everything was very even around it. So uh, you just do this, like you pull it down here to get a darker vignette. You could also do a reverse where you pull it up and you get a lighter vignette. This might also be useful for some things like making older pictures and, and stuff like that where you have like um, the edges are kind of burnt. All right, and then I added another sharpen with a noise as well. So this is just to introduce a little more, I don't know, realism into it, I guess. So before and after, just the sharpen, just to make it sharp again, and the noise just to really even out some of these details, because you can see here, there's not a lot of stuff happening in, in the darker areas, and I feel the noise really helps combat that. All right, and then up here, just for the fun of it, I have the original. And it's always fun to like flip back and forth, I think, to see how far you are along in your process. And especially towards the end, so you like see, this is where we started. And I mean, it looks decent compared to this though, it doesn't. I mean, it's still fine, it's not bad, but I just think this is a lot more visually interesting. And I think it took, I don't know, like 20 minutes of Photoshop, just like quick photo bashing here and there, uh, erase some stuff and, and play with some blending modes. So really quickly, you can really spice up your image a lot, I think. So, so yeah, I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you guys next time.